What's up everybody, welcome to Nav Night. We're so glad that you're here, and if this is your first time being with us, um, Navigators are about uh, knowing Christ and making others known. So uh, we're gonna jump right into some worship time. This is 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. See like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy Yeah. 
Hello, my name is Juan and I want to welcome you all to this virtual nav night. Um, I thank you all for, jo for joining us and I'm so excited that you're here. Um, yeah, I just hope that you guys are all staying safe and that classes are going all right and everything's just going super smooth. Uh, and I just want to introduce tonight's speaker, which will be Alec Lonowski, and he will be speaking to us on about evangelism. But right before he does that, I just want to pray real quick that we have a smooth transition into the word yeah um dear god heavenly father tonight i would just want to pray and thank you that even if we can all be together right now in these moments uh that you still give us a way to listen to your word and hear it like this virtual nav night and just thank you for always providing us a way to get to get to know you every day um i pray for alec tonight as he has prepared this message on evangelism that might give us a better understanding on evangelism and knowledge on it and that it might spark interest in us perhaps and that something that we might be able to do with more ease and i just want to pray for everyone's safety and health tonight i pray that as the semester starting to get closer to midterms and just just all of that. I just pray that you give us the strength and courage to get through it. And yeah, I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Alec, um, and I'm currently an analyst at Spreetel. And I'm actually an alumni of UNO and of the Navigators. Uh, and it's great to be back. Um, and I'm excited to be able to talk to you about evangelism even in a virtual setting with everything going on um, and actually this topic of evangelism is very close to my heart because I actually came to know Christ through the work of a navigator my freshman year of college um, so coming into college I was actually agnostic I did not care about anything related to God or the Bible and it just didn't apply to my life at that time and I wasn't looking for anything in particular and I didn't care uh, but in college, I was looking to find my own achievement, succeed, find my own worldly success, if you will. Uh, but during college, I actually ran to a friend uh, named Matt, and he just became, we just became friends. <laughs> uh, we would go to the cafeteria together, dining halls. Uh, we would hit up the rec together, play video games, and we, we were just really good friends. Um, and from there... Matt actually started to dive a little deeper with me, ask me deeper questions, uh, get to know me, who I was, and he showed that he really cared, and I, through our time together, I could tell that I could trust him. Uh, he really wanted to understand who I was on a deeper level, not just surface level. And through that time there, eventually that led to uh, reading the Bible together. Uh, and through my time with Matt, eventually, I began to understand what God's grace was for me. I understood it on a personal level that I needed to take that step. And it was from just those meetings with Matt, the way he w walked through everything with me, that I became to have my own journey. <laughs> uh, that's just a little bit about my journey so far through that first year of college. Um, and now I'm excited to talk about what that looks like for all of us. Because when on a topic of evangelism, we see it as, oh, I need to be a missionary. Only certain people are called to evangelism, which just isn't true. Uh, we see that in scripture, that we are all called. Uh, we'll first look at Mark sixteen fifteen, which pretty much lays us out. Uh, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. So we get it pretty much right there. Who? everyone where the whole world and what the good news <laughs> it's pretty clear and straightforward uh that we're called uh and that can be scary times but we'll look again at matthew 28 19 through 20 um therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them to obey everything i have commanded you and remember i am with you always to the end of the age. In that last part we're going to read again, 
I am with you always to the end of the age. What we need to remember is that he is with us. This is not our own doing. And it's actually a gift that we get from him. He is the one working through us. And so our first step to evangelism would be to make sure that we are abiding in him. Uh, we, without abiding in him, we are we live alone and we can do nothing. We see that in John 15, uh, John 15, 5. Uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So we need to be able to hold true to what he's teaching us. His word, his truth needs to be a firm foundation for us before we can go out. We need to make sure that it, our foundation within him is secure before we can rely on that to reach others. And we need to remember that it is God who saves, not ourselves. There is nothing we can do in our power to save. That is only from God. And he actually doesn't even need us, but he chooses to work through us. Um, what he needs is someone who is willing to go and is someone who holds true his foundations and his truth. So the question would be, in what ways have you not been able to truly abide in his word and his truth? So you may be thinking, where do I go? Or how do I start? There's no way I'm going to be able to reach the whole world on my own. Um, and with that, we're going to look at Acts 1.8. Uh, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. What we see here is we see certain areas where we are going. We are placed in areas for a purpose. Uh, those could be at your job, in your classes, in your dorm, um, in the city of Lincoln and beyond. But we are placed with a purpose. Uh, and what we see in this verse particular are these different sizes, like Jerusalem, a little bit bigger to all Judea, a little bit bigger with Samaria, these areas, and then to the end of the earth. Uh, in those areas, you have your own Jerusalem, your own Judea, and your own Samaria. Uh, that could be, what is your Jerusalem? Could be your dorm, could be your job, Judea, your campus in general, Samaria, all the way out to Lincoln. We are placed in these certain areas to reach certain people. Because in each of these areas, that's where people are. So that's where we go. We go where the people are. We connect with people where we're at. So the question is, what would your Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria be in your own life. So when we start interacting with these people in our jobs, in our classes, uh, what we need to try to push ourselves to do is to get out of our comfort zones and interact with people who are different from us. Uh, this would include people who look different from us, act different from us, uh, not in our Christian circle of friends, but taking a deeper step to reach the bigger body. Uh, to invest in people who we probably normally wouldn't even interact with. Uh, and we see this with Jesus, actually, with the Samaritan woman in John 4. Um, so John 4, starting in verse 7, uh, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and what is that I is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. So what we see is, Jesus stepping out into an area where, at that time, Jews and Samaritans did not interact. Uh, but he broke that boundary, that barrier. He would interact with this woman uh, and to share something greater that she needed to hear. So in what ways are we holding back from interacting with people different from us? Are we just staying in areas that feel safe? And how that impact 
impacted the lives of so many people that we interact with? Do we pass by on a daily because it seems uncomfortable? So in what ways are you stepping out of your comfort zone to reach the people around you? When we start to have these conversations with people, what it comes down to is it really starts with caring. Really caring about who they are as a person, uh, starting to ask questions about their lives, uh, having doing life with them. Um, when you meet people at, at your job, at your dorm, does your heart break for the lost? Do you see them more as just somebody walking by? Uh, and then in these conversations, we need to use tact. Uh, and what is tact, right? Uh, but Sir Isaac Newton actually defines tact as the ability to make a point without making an enemy. Uh, and because in our conversations, we have a point to make, a point to prove, but at the same time, we're not there to lose the person, to lose the soul. Uh, and that all comes with the relationship building. And as we work in gospel news, as we continue to invest in this person's life and to do life with them, and really, on top of that, another thing to just overall remember is that it is not our own doing. Uh, all of this comes from God working within us, the Spirit moving in those ways. And there is no one way of evangelism. There's no perfect way. Uh, there's different ways to reach to people based on who they are, their relationship in general, and the situation you're in. Um, and we see that with Jesus. He worked in different ways. He worked in different ways with different people. Uh, he worked differently with Nicodemus, he worked differently with Zac Zacchaeus, uh, the rich young man, and as we saw, the woman at the well. There's no one way to evangelize. Um, and we will see that continually with different people that we interact with, because everybody's different. And the Lord works in different ways. And how all that is that it's going to take patience, it's going to take time. Uh, because we'd like things to work on our own time, but that is not how things work. Um, and even in my situation, it took me over a year before I was able to really understand the gospel and what it meant uh, through Matt's patience and just continuing to invest in my life. Um, and on top of all that, you need to remember the power of your testimony. Everyone has a story of how God has worked in your life, and it has meaning. There's power in your story. And there are people who will be able to benefit from hearing how God has moved in your life, what he has done in you, and how you've changed. And they have be able to see that change in you. So when we look at evangelism, and we see people, does your heart break for those who are lost? And how can you personally use your own testimony effectively with the people around you? So when we look to evangelize, we need to remember that it all starts with us abiding in him and his word, uh, making sure that we are standing on his truth for who he says we are, and we believe in his promises, that his promises are going to be fulfilled within our time, in our lives, trusting in that he will still be moving in our lives. Uh, that those who abide will bear much fruit, um, that every person will hear of his name and of the good news, that his kingdom will still be built around us. Uh, and it ha all happens with us being willing to go. First step is us giving up control and being willing to be sent out into our jobs, our classes, anywhere where the people are that we would open up and express this good, this good news to those around us. It takes walking in confidence that his work will be done in the lives of those around us and that we are willing to walk into what we've been called. Uh, it's more than it. We are called to do it. And it all takes that confidence and trust in his presence is going to be fulfilled in that. Because it is not 
us alone through the mixing. It is God alone who saves. Uh, but we are his vessel to be worked through. Um, and that comes from remembering that we have a story to tell. And it's powerful. Uh, what the Lord has done is all, in our lives is not to be taken for granted. Uh, it's powerful and has meaning. Uh, and those around us will be able to experience that and see that in the way we talk in our actions, how we interact with them. And they will be able to see something different in us. And what it comes down to, and no one is too lost to be saved because our God is mighty to save every single person. It is him alone who saves. Uh, and right now, we're living in a very different time. Uh, definitely different than when I was on campus. Um, and it's easy in the, during this time to make excuses uh, that this isn't the time to reach people. Uh, we need to stay away. <laughs> Uh, but even in the midst of everything going on, God is still moving. Uh, even with the distancing and people staying away from each other, uh, we have confidence that he will be the one to move in that and that good will come out of it. Uh, even though people are distant and it may seem hard to reach out to people, uh, there's comforts that have been removed. Uh, people don't have some substitutes or things they were looking for anymore. A lot of those are gone. Uh, but one thing that isn't gone is God in his presence. Uh, and now is the time to take a big leap of faith in that and to trust that God will work miracles through us. Uh, and it all comes from a deep trust that we have in his word. Let me pray. Uh, Father, we just trust in you. You, who you are, who you say we are. Uh, God, I pray that we would all be willing to reach out and just be a vessel for you. That all of us would say, here I am, Lord, send me. Uh, that your presence would fill us, your Holy Spirit would lead us. Uh, as we know that you are the one who saves, not on our own. And we can have confidence in that, Lord. Uh, God, I pray those around us that we would take opportunities and that doors would open uh, to be able to share with those in our classes and our jobs uh, that those opportunities would come about and that we would take them with confidence Lord and in all that that you would be glorified in our actions amen would you all pray with me um dear Lord we just thank you for today um, we thank you for um, the message uh, from Alec, and we thank you uh, that you're a good God, Lord. Um, Lord, we pray that this week and um, in our day to day that we can live out um, this life of evangelism um, with uh, those around us, um, that we would be bold for the gospel. Um, Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, and um, we pray that, yeah, we can continue to see your goodness and faithfulness in each thing we're doing um yeah in your name amen this is how deep the father's love for us how deep the father's love for us how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory
All right, just a couple quick announcements before we head on out here. You're probably watching this on YouTube, right? So go ahead and like this video, and while you're at it, go on over to our channel and hit subscribe and turn on those post notifications. That way you know whenever we go live. But next week's going to look a little bit different. We're going to be in person next week. Um, so if you're not following us on Instagram at UNL Navigators, go on over there and hit us up with a follow because you're gonna, that's where you're going to find the information on when and where it will be. Also, if you're looking for a Bible study or a small group to get connected with, there's a link in our bio. So go ahead and click on that, and that'll get you connected. Also, coming up, we got J-Team. It's a five-week program equipping you with um, a bunch of different stuff to advance the gospel and know Jesus and make him known. I can test this because I was also in J-Team. It's a lot of fun. Um, and finally, if you want free food, Grace Chapel is having food and community between their services on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. So if you want community and free food, go over there. See you guys next week.